Hey guys, so welcome to quarter two of 2018. And believe it or not, we're in the quarter two, our quarter two of this year, which is absolutely crazy to me. But I think it's important that at least once a quarter, we kind of look back at our goals that we set for the beginning of the year and assess where we are. So if we need to change the strategy or get a new game plan in place so that we stay on track for those goals, we do so instead of being caught off guard at the end of the year and being like, what the hell happened? Um, so the last month I've been traveling a lot. I was in San Diego for two different events uh, for two weeks. So the traffic and conversion and then 90 day year live, which were both amazing events. I made some awesome strategic partnerships, met some incredible people and formed new relationships and friendships and then learned a ton of things. But um, one of the recurring themes throughout both of them was that no matter how many people you meet or how much you learn or how awesome an event was, if you don't take action and actually implement things that um, you learned or consumed at that event, it, it's going to be pretty much completely worthless. So it got me thinking because we are in this fresh start of the new quarter that it would be an awesome time to start a challenge for online course creation because a lot of people I know had the goal of setting or creating a course this year and how amazing would it be to be able to say in at the beginning of quarter three of this year that you have a completed program that's ready to launch that may very well become the most valuable business asset that you ever create. So starting this Wednesday, I'm going to be hosting a free challenge um, which will include uh, training videos as well as action steps, activities, and then uh, I'll be doing Facebook Lives throughout that uh, free course so that you can actually help you like implement what it is that you're learning. If there's any questions or things that are um, holding you back or obstacles that you're facing, we can just crush those and keep making progress and build momentum. So you'll, ab you'll be able to earn points for how engaged you are within the challenge and then use those points to unlock bonuses and like buy things in um, the online course store that I have. So basically I'm giving you everything that I possibly can offer you to help you take action and then build some of that momentum. Because when you start taking action on things, um, this like perpetual success loops happens. So that action leads to progress. That progress leads to confidence. That confidence leads to you taking more action. And then it's like this perpetual loop that just keeps going on and on. And before you know it, it's like that snowball effect where you're just freaking unstoppable. So um, that will be this Wednesday. If you're interested in joining, go ahead and comment below. I think go write action in the comments below. And that way anyone that types that, I'll know that to make sure you get notified. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention while I was here was kind of talk about the different ways that you can incorporate a course within your business. So a lot of people think that um, they're like, well, a course doesn't really work for my type of business model or um, it just wasn't something that I had really envisioned on creating. But there is really eight core strategies for incorporating a course within your business that can really expedite um, growth and bottom line profitability. So I wanted to run through what those are right now so you can see where they could, where a course could fit in to your business. So number one is the one that we're all like most familiar with, which is a course being an additional revenue stream um, within your business. So you're creating a course basically to sell it, most likely at a premium price, and add that product to your product suite. That's pretty like straightforward, so I don't need to dive into more details about that. Now, number two is creating a program for the purpose or creating a course for the purpose of the sales process. So basically you're using a course to move a customer or a prospect further down the buyer's journey. And we do this all the time. We're really familiar with this for the most part when it comes to content marketing um, and like writing blog posts and email series and like basic, basic sales calls. But by changing that, like the way that you're delivering that and putting it into a course, it really makes it a lot more engaging to that prospect and easier to consume. So just like the reason why people will pay premium prices for courses when they could 
probably find that information on the internet for free. It's because they want to consume it in a systemized format. In a step-by-step -step process that gets them to that end result faster than they could by sifting through all the bazillions of YouTube videos and like blog articles that are out there and wasting a ton of time. So an example of this, because uh, I always think examples really help, would be I did this for my business with the agency side of things for online course design and development. So when someone signs up for a demo of the course, it also puts them into a mini course that kind of teaches a process of how to hire, how to get ready to design and develop your course, and then how to hire um, a company to do that. Another example, I had written down a few of these, um, oh, could be a medical spa. So for a company or a, a clinic, or I don't even know what you would call it, that did like skincare, so uh, microdermabrasion or chemical peels or Botox, I, I don't know, it's not my forte, but creating a mini course that taught people the basics of skincare and like how to know which which treatment was best for you, I think would be extremely valuable or how to go about finding a clinic to or a um, spa, whatever you would call it, and like the the things to look out for too. Or even if you were just selling like um, the skincare line, it's really overwhelming all the information that's out there on the different types of products and there's so much of it that's just complete bullshit. So having like a course that educated the buyer through that process would be, I think, extremely useful to someone that was interested or in that market, in the buyer's market. Same thing for someone that was creating a course on um, or that had a business doing personal branding photography. So creating a mini course on how to get ready for your photo shoot or the eight core pic pictures you need to um, grow your personal brand. Again, that'll be extremely valuable. So when you're thinking about this strategy for course creation, basically think about what you, your sales process. And I highly suggest, recommend, or I highly suggest recording your sales calls um, saving all like email correspondence that goes um, back and forth during that initial sales process and find a way that you can now like incorporate those components into a mini course and that's really going to help you leverage like instead of it having to be all a salesperson on your team or all you talking to someone one-on-one -on -one, um, you're really able to scale that sales process which means more money and that's awesome. Um, the third one, which I'm, was one of my favorites because it's one that I don't think people think about that much and um, it can be like it makes such an impact on our business and this is customer onboarding. So creating a program or a course that as soon as a customer purchases from you, they're able to go through this onboarding like process, this course. And again, examples are just the easiest way to explain this. So I did this for my business when, for the agency, when customers um, become a client for online course design and development, I found that I was repeating the same things over and over again, or my product manager was, and um, basically like how to get started, how to, um, the content that we need, the deliverables, the timeline. So instead of just like repeating like a million times over to every client, um, I created a course where as soon as they log in, then or as soon as they purchase, then they get uh, access to a membership site that then do, has like these mini tutorial videos. And then you can also incorporate some really cool uh, strategies as far as like that you would do for a normal course, like video triggers. So if they watch, uh, if they don't watch a video, you can like give them that gentle nudge, be like, hey, you didn't watch this onboarding video. This is the steps we need in order to move forward. Um, watch it now and uh, gamification for engagement things like that so that is really cool and the reason why I love this strategy is because a lot of people or when you people are looking at business growth they're thinking well okay you need more sales in order to grow or become more profitable but that's really just one way of growing your business and oftentimes it's by creating systems and uh, streamlining and systematizing internal processes that you're really able to save time as well as um, decrease costs and that affects or that is a 
positive to the bottom line, like almost immediately. So by decreasing costs and expenses associated with the business, you're probably going to become much more profitable than just focusing on sales. Same thing with increasing customer retention um, and customer lifetime value. If you're able to deliver higher quality of service to your customers, there's much more likely that they'll be, can continue to be uh, customers of yours. So that customer onboarding um, is a great way of doing that for both aspects of it. Another company that does this really well, I made a note of this, or actually like companies I think that should implement this, would one example would be like a law firm. Um, and I don't know why the first thing comes to my mind because I don't know anything about law, who would be like a, diver a divorce attorney. And so when they got a new client, I'm sure there's like repetitive things that have to be taught over and over again. And an attorney's time is really valuable. Those aren't billable hours when you're just basically doing, um, or at least I don't think they're billable hours. I don't know how that works. Um, when you're just basically like getting them onboarded through the process, telling them what they need, telling them how to be like amicable to their ex-husband or whatever. Um, if you could basically automate some of that content into a course, that would be valuable on both ends. And then another way that you could really, I think, add some additional value. So always think about how can I incorporate more value to my customers would be maybe if they brought on um, a counselor or a therapist that did like a minute, like a 30 minute, like mini training in the program or course that was like how to make the process of divorce easier on the kids. And I think having that would be like, it would just it would go really far with proving that you cared um, with customers. So again, yeah, that's another example, but that can work for so many different businesses. And then the fourth one is pretty much like the same type of thing or the fourth strategy, and that's for people or companies that have software or SaaS products. And if you rely on a subscription-based model, so, Basically, you're, in order for you to make money, you need your customers to continue to pay for a service or a software on a monthly basis or annual basis. The most impor important metric for you is retention and decreasing customer churn. And the key to increasing that retention when it comes to software is to get your customers to log in and start using it within 48 hours but then also log in on a consistent basis for a few days in order to get past that initial learning curve and start incorporating that software into their routine. Because if you're able to do this, then you are so much more likely to get them to stay as customers. So I'm amazed by how many SaaS products and software companies are not doing this. Um, one or two that are doing it well that I've noticed is ClickFunnels. So as soon as you purchase ClickFunnels, they have um, an onboarding course that you take and they also incentivize you to complete it if you complete it within like a certain number of days and you get a free t-shirt. Another company is ManyChat. They just released a awesome course that Molly Pittman did from um, Digital Marketer. Basically, it's teaching customers how to utilize the software. So they're much more likely to stay on board and actually start using it and getting the benefits uh, that it can provide. Because the reason why people cancel, and the same reason why they cancel membership sites, it's not because like your product sucks or they don't like it or they don't like you. It's just that people are busy and you need to eliminate those friction points as much as possible to get them to actually start consuming the content or cons using the software. And the way they're going to do this is if they know how to use it. So like a few that come off the top of my head or come to mind that should be doing this that aren't doing it is Intercom, um, Airtable, and Grow Dashboard, which is a um, business KPI metrics dashboard. And the reason these come to mind is because I'm using each of these software and they're not, they're not cheap. They're, they're fairly expensive with, when you get to a certain rate. Like I think Intercom, that's a live chat support. Um, 
and with the cust with the number of customers that we have for this business, it's like four hundred and fifty dollars a month. Um Airtable would be like fifteen hundred annual, I think, and then Grow Dashboard is six hundred dollars a month. And um they all have like their their wikis or their help desks, not yeah, help desks and also the internal where you can like basically search for how to do things. But again, that's putting more work on the customer. Like they're having to search for things. They're having a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. Like I don't know features that Intercom can do. I know there's so many amazing features. There's so much I have no idea what it's capable of because I I don't have like a systemized training to sh like show me it. And I don't even know how to search for the things uh, because I don't know what I don't know. So those three companies are listening. You should totally implement an online course for your onboarding. Same thing with Grow Dashboard. I was like, they have an amazing product, but I was this close to canceling because it was just, I could not, the, I could not figure out how to use it as quickly as I wanted to, which was really frustrating to me. Um, and again, that's $600 a month. Uh, software. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people that have canceled because of that. But if they had had a course that could teach this, that would have been amazing. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So you already have like all those questions from the customer service and support team. Like, why not look through the most uh, commonly or frequently asked questions or searches? and then incorporate that into a mini onboarding course. It would do you wonders. I wish I had like concrete stats that I could share as far as like how effective this is and it's something I'm working on with current clients uh, as case studies to see what the difference is in retention um, before and after. It's something that is like, it's gonna take a while to get those numbers, but just intuitively, I feel like it's gonna be like really substantial. So I'll let you know. Um, and then moving on, okay, number five is for companies that have physical products that rely on distributors. So if you're selling a product and you have other people or other businesses that are selling that product for you as well, creating a course for those distributors that helps them either sell more or learn how to use the product is invaluable. So I had a client or a company contact me that sells um, makeup airbrush devices. And along with that, they have the refillable airbrush, the makeup. So as you use the device, like you have to keep buying the uh, airbrush makeup. So their customers are primarily makeup artists. The makeup artists um, are the ones that are buying the device and then using it on their clients and customers. So the purpose of this course was to help teach the makeup artist how to use it the most effectively, learn new skills, um, like the benefits of the product. And then the goal is to get them to feel more confident, more comfortable um, with that device. So they start using it more and therefore are buying more uh, the makeup. So it's a win-win. And this could also then be repurposed for also that number two strategy, which is the sales and lead um, process. So the other like really cool thing about this and creating content for courses is that you don't have to do, incorporate just one strategy. You can reuse this content throughout a, lo a lot of these strategies that we're talking about. Um, and then number six, oh wait, there was two more things I wanted to mention. Um, like another example of a company that could be doing this really well would be anyone in the MLM space. Um, so for people that are selling essential oils, creating a training program for um, the people under you on how like you started your business um, in the essential oil space and then giving them more tools on specifically how like you strategies you've used that worked for selling. That's awesome because you're relying on them to sell products in order for you to make more money. And then another version of this is a little bit different is affiliate programs. So especially with people that have courses that rely heavily on affiliates, or even if you don't rely heavily on affiliates, but you want to start um, adding an affiliate program, creating a mini course for your affiliates on how to promote 
your product better or a strategy that they can incorporate for selling, that could be a huge revenue driver because as your affiliates sell more, obviously they're selling your product, so you're gonna be selling more too. And I've seen one company do this really, really well, and that again is ClickFunnels. So when you sign up for, for their ClickFunnels affiliate program, they do, um, it's like a 100-day uh, affiliate ClickFunnels mastery thing, which is crazy, that's extremely long. Um, but the whole goal is to like give them all the strategies to sell more of that product. Um, and then number six is internal training platforms. So again, this goes back to the growth and profitability of a company is by not only like more sales and more customers, but it's decreasing costs and increasing efficiency within the business. And this can be huge. So internal training platforms, if you have things that you're teaching to new employees anytime you bring someone on or someone leaves and you have to replace them, that is so much time, not only from the employee that you're spending um, the time teaching, but also the manager and then that learning curve. So if you can put what you're teaching um, these employees into a really clear, concise, and like systematized format of an online course, that would be amazing. And I'm sure anyone that's in corporate is familiar with this. You go through um, onboarding and internal training courses all the time. But now with this day and age and the technology that's available, you don't have to be a hundred million dollar corporation to have your own internal training platform. Like I have like two employees, <laughs> two employees and I have it um, as well. So I can use it for contractors um, if a new contractor has come on. So if you're at the 25 employee mark, you definitely need this, but you really should be starting at a much, much like sooner um, level than that. And then the last two, I'm not gonna go into like a bunch of detail because it kind of went off on like the deep end here, um, all these different versions or strategies for courses, but that is certification programs and corporate licensing. So corporate licensing is where you're basically, you're allowing a corporation to purchase from you and then they're able to um, get a certain number of licenses that they can then give to their employees. And digital marketer, Digital, digital marketer is HQ is a great example of this. And um, a lot of health and wellness companies or consultants and programs are now licensing these out to corporate because basically every corporation in ever has a budget for um, employee benefits and health and wellness. So that's an amazing opportunity right now. And I'm gonna do a whole other video on that because that goes into a lot more depth. Um, but there's a lot of potential and opportunity that people aren't aware of yet. So that's exciting. And then uh, the certification program is basically like licensing out or franchising your brand um, and your intellectual property. So companies that are doing this would be like Ask Method certification with Ryan Levesque, uh, Todd Herman's 90 Day Year certification, as well as a lot of software companies. So Infusionsoft, um, Certified Partner Program, um, Evernote certified partners, Teamwork certified partners, and again, this is this kind of ties back into that onboarding um, strategy. If you can empower your partners to become better at their jobs, you're going to be selling a lot more. So again, that's going to be a whole another whole other topic. But hopefully, that gave you some new ideas on how you can incorporate courses within your business because I really think there is so much potential, like completely untapped potential, to really streamline, systematize, increase sales, provide a higher quality or a higher customer service, and increase retention when it comes to incorporating courses within your business that people aren't even aware of. So if you want in on this challenge and this mini or this course, it's going to be starting on Wednesday. Leave a comment below and then um, just type action and I'll make sure to notify you and we'll get started. Talk to you guys later.